Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all some soap recipes that I formulated and doing some lather tests um, on camera. So I've got all my finished bars. I took a full bar from every batch. Um, and I'm going to be lather testing them on camera and kind of describing just the different properties that each bar has. Now, these are totally different recipes and I just thought it would be really interesting to share this with all of you soapers out there and just kind of, uh, just to show what sometimes the different oils can contribute to the bar in terms of the lather and the feel of the bar. And I did obviously run all these recipes through soap calc as well. Um, it's a lie calculator for those of you who are, who are new to it. And um, I will be sharing all the recipes in the description box if any of you want to try them out yourself. Now, just a couple things I want to mention as well. Um, there are certain properties in soap calc. So there's a whole column that talks about soap bar quality. And there were certain properties in there that were really important to me in all these recipes to have at least at a certain level. And bubbly was one of the most important as well as hardness for me. Um, I like a bar that is really, really hard. So all of these soaps came out at least at a 40 for hardness, which is really kind of where I like to be at, um, at a minimum for that hardness. Um, some of them got all the way up to, I believe like a 46 or so, but a minimum of a 40 for a hardness was important for me personally. I also really like a bubbly bar. And so all of these bars you're gonna see, um, I recorded this part actually after the video, uh, were very bubbly in general. And that property, as I said, is super important to me. And I like it to be at a minimum of like a 23 for bubbly. And then for cleansing, I also like a bar that's pretty cleansing. Um, it's just important to me because it's soap. So I do like the cleansing number to be at a minimum of like a 17 or so. And for some people that may be too high, um, but I like to combat that with really luxurious oils and super fatting all of my uh, formulas at 5%. That way the more cleansing properties of my bars do not become drying. So that super fatting for those of you who are new to soap making is basically adding that certain percentage of unsaponifiable um, oils. So basically a little bit past what you would need to, to form the bar of soap. And what that does is it leaves something on the skin after the soap has done its cleansing work. It replenishes the skin with lots of rich and luxurious oils. So you are going to see um, as I go through all of these bars of soap, some things that are kind of common uh, because of the fact that these recipes were formulated with similar ideas in mind. I'm actually quite impressed with how they turned out and I can't wait to share them with you all. Now I wanted to mention as well that all of these formulas do contain palm oil so if that's a make it or break it for you um, definitely uh, just click off the video because you know well it still might be interesting to just kind of see the properties of the bars but um, if that is a make it or break it for you these do all use that in the formula. When I make soap I generally use on the soap calc the water as a percentage of oil weight at 25% and that generally allows me to have some time with the soap but not have you know so much time that there's just a lot of excess water content and I just find that that's a good balance for me personally. Um, for those of you who like to use the water to lie ratio this usually runs around a 1.7 or so to one uh, water to lie ratio. It's going to obviously depend a little bit based on the oils that you're using because they'll all require a slightly different amount of lye in order to uh, supply modify them but that's kind of about where it runs if you like to look at that ratio. Now, one huge disclaimer is that this video in no way was prepared using the scientific method. I basically was just having fun and making lots of different recipes in soap calc with things that looked intriguing to me that I had on hand already, which I would strongly encourage you to do. Don't go out and buy all these oils. Some of them are very expensive that I'm gonna be using, but I had them on hand just because I used use them for other things like body butters and that kind of stuff. I basically used what I already had on hand and I formulated these in soap calc with properties that were the most important to me, getting those properties at a certain level. I'm gonna also put some resources in the description box of some of my favorite books for soap making. One of them is called, I believe it's The Scientific Soap Making, that's usually my night reading book, um, as well as some of Anne-Marie's books that I really like and that 
kind of gave me the basis for formulation. I'm gonna also put a couple of videos in the description box as well um, that were really useful to me when I first started formulating my own soap recipes uh, just a couple months ago. But anyways, uh, let's get right into the video and I hope that you enjoy. So this first one here is formula number one and this one contains a very high amount of mango butter. So we'll dunk it in there. Oh yeah, so right away this one does start lathering, um, but it feels more like a, um, you can kind of see, it's kind of a flat lather. I wouldn't call it a really loopy lather. It's kind of more conditioning, I would say. And let's see if we can go in again. Yeah, so I'm going in again, and I am getting some more of those kind of loopier bubbles, the bigger bubbles, along with that really conditioning lather. This one I could almost see being used as like a shaving soap. The lather is very thick and lotiony on this one. And the second one here also contains a high amount of saturated fats. Um, so those oils that are solid at room temperature, you can see that <laughs> I didn't have very much time to, to work here. Um, but you could also combat that soaping at a lower temperature. This one I did soap with the oils pretty hot at 127 and the lye was at 117. Uh, this is a really nice firm hard bar just like the first one. Measures at a 46 on soap calc for hardness. And this one has the mango butter at 10% and it also has a substantial amount of uh, cocoa butter. Oh yeah, so this one is actually getting bigger bubbles, um, kind of the more loopy lather. I don't know if it picks up on the screen, but I do also feel with this one more of that conditioning. This one's got a really nice feel to it. It's a nice balance of the bigger bubbles and also of that more lotion-y type texture. Now this third bar here has got the sweet almond oil and the cacao butter to it. And this one has a lot of time if you wanna do more intricate swirls. Um, I may have soaped a little bit too cool with it though because I did get a lot of soda ash. Uh, I steamed a lot of it off. So here goes bar number three. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, this one's really nice too. Um, it's definitely, so this one, I am getting more of, I would say you kind of get more of that heavy olive oil type of a feel with it. It does only have 30%, but I think what I'm trying to say is like a conditioning feel. It's kind of got that really um, almost lotion-y feel to it, but it's not as thick as the first one. Um, and then I'm also getting some of those bigger bubbles coming as I kind of just rub it a little bit more. This one smells amazing too. I used the Love Spell fragrance uh, by the Flaming Candle and it just, it soaked like a dream. Now this one, I did also add the Tussa Silk and the Cane Sugar too. So, oh, it's got a really creamy, creamy buttery feel to it. It's really creamy. I think that the Tussa Silk is definitely adding to that though and the cane sugar that I added to the lye water solution. The first two that we did did not have that, so I think that you could definitely amp up that creaminess with any formula just by adding that cane sugar and Tussa Silk, look at that, to your lye water solution. Now, formula number four here was really stressful. Um, this is the one where I used the beeswax, uh, half a percent of beeswax in the formula. And I don't know that I'll ever try to do that again with soap. Yes, it contributes to a harder bar, but this one was so difficult. Um, the beeswax starts separating when it's below 130. And so I, it was very difficult. I ended up having to strain out some of the beeswax. Um, it's got a lot of unsaponifiable oil uh, fat content in it too. So here goes rosemary sage. Ooh, but I really love the feel of this one. Okay, so this one right away, you're getting 
a nice like a whole bunch of different variations of lather to this one so it's like a thick lather but it's also really bubbly um wow so it's like it's almost like mixing all the other ones up i think i really like this one look at how big some of those bubbles are and then you're getting like the smaller bubbles as well um yeah there's like a whole range with this one and it's super creamy and I would say that this one's gonna have a really good conditioning property. Wow, I really, really, really like this one. Number five here has got a little bit more olive oil to it. Um, and it's got a very high percentage of mango butter. It looks like we're at about 17.44%. Um, and those hard butters at that type of a percentage can be really difficult. They can really accelerate things. Um, so this one, I did also use some fractionated coconut oil just because I had some that I needed to use up and I was curious um, how it would contribute um, to this bar. Okay, so this one, I'm getting more of the sort of loopy lather to it, um, but it does not, no, actually, as I keep going here, I am getting quite a nice mix. It's kind of more of, well, it's kind of becoming similar to several of the other ones as I keep going with it. I can really feel that activated charcoal. Um, I use quite a bit of that in this one. And this one did also, wow, yeah, the more that I use this one, so it takes a little bit longer maybe to get going, but it's got a really fluffy lather to it, I would say. And this bar also was very, very hard. Um, the hardness was at a 45. It feels like it'd be very conditioning. Wow. That's like the thickest, maybe the thickest lather of any of them. It took a little longer to get going, but wow. And last but not least, we have this beautiful bar, which uses formula number six. Now, formula number six is identical, actually, to formula number three, but I just thought, since I had this bar ready, that I would um, use one in the test as well. Um, this one did also use the Tussa Silk, as well as the cane sugar, and this one had um, goat milk powder added to it as well. So I'm expecting a really creamy, um, gentle bar, and the only con that I have to this formula, um, again, this is the same as formula number three, it did produce a lot of soda ash. Now, I know soda ash is usually caused by um, when you are soaping at a very low temperature and then you're pouring at a very thin trace. And that's what I did for both of these. So it, it's probably not the fault of the formula, but more so just the temperature that I soaked at as well as the trace that I poured at, which was very thin so that I could get these intricate swirls. This one takes a little bit longer to get going and you do have a beautiful amount of bubbles. I would say that this one's a little bit less bubbly than some of the others. Um, same case with number three. This is, again, the same formula, but this one just uses the goat milk instead of the coconut milk. Um, so a, maybe a tiny bit less bubbly um, than some of the other ones that we did, but it's just got a beautiful conditioning feel to it. I'm gonna dip one more time here. Oh my gosh, I love the feel of this one too. That is gonna be all for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed this and I am very impressed with how these soaps turned out overall. And I'm really excited to have full bars of them, which as most soap makers know, we usually get like the end scraps when we're making soap loaves. So to be able to have full bars of each of these, I am overjoyed about and I can't wait to use them in the shower. <laughs> but anyways, if you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below of what soap making books and formulas you like to use personally. Um, I think in my future formulas, I'm gonna try using a little bit more olive oil actually. 
and um, a little bit of a balance between the cocoa butter and the um, sweet almond oil along with a higher olive oil amount. I think that capping the olive oil at 35% like I did in all of these formulas is definitely okay. I think that that um, is very common, but I just wanna try a little bit higher olive oil to see what that will do along with the balance of the cocoa butter and the uh, sweet almond oil. But anyways, I'm gonna get back to the soap lab, i.e. my kitchen, and um, continue formulating more recipes in the coming months just for my own experimentation. I think that it's so interesting how each formula will contribute to different properties and soap calc is such a valuable resource that we all have uh, for free access. And it's a resource that I would encourage you if you have time to just play around with. But anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy soaping. I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna sing I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna sing I'm gonna sing